Welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent. Christmas is near. The birth of Jesus is coming very soon. In our readings today, we hear about how King David is beginning to make plans, make preparations for the building of a temple, a building of a house of God that he believes could give glory to God. There's just one little problem with that, is this is David's plan and not God's plan. And soon after he makes these plans, Nathan the prophet comes and encourages him to stop, revealing that, no, God has a better plan in store. And isn't that the case so often in our own lives, that we make plans, and maybe you've been making plans for Christmas. Maybe they've changed a few times. Maybe you're anticipating what that Christmas day will look like. The gospel today gives us an example of how we can receive God's plan in our life. Mary, this young woman, was open to receiving the message of the angel Gabriel. And even though she didn't fully understand it at first, she even questioned, how can this be? Which I don't believe was a question out of doubt or out of fear, but rather one truly trying to understand God's plan in her life. Why? So that she could give her full assent to that plan. That she could say yes with all that she has. And that's what we hear at the end of the gospel. May it be done to me according to your word. How do you listen to the plan of God in your life? And how do you respond to the invitation of the Lord? These can be great things for us to be able to reflect on this last week of Advent, a time when we're busy making those final preparations for Christmas. Are they preparations that give glory to God? Do we encounter the Lord in the midst of it? Or do we kind of push him aside, trying to do our own thing, thinking that we know what is best? That would be the trap that King David falls into. I would encourage you, uh, reflect on your plans for this Christmas. And how do you encounter the Lord, or how are you preparing to receive the Lord in the midst of those plans? Yes, it's great to anticipate getting together with friends and family, to be able to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the light of the world. So often you've probably gazed at an Advent wreath. We have our four candles lit. The, the light of Christ is coming soon. Even this week, we'll recognize that it's the darkest week of the year. And soon, the days will start getting longer, longer in light, that is. And how appropriate that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, comes in at the darkest time, at the time when there seems like there's no hope, when it's difficult to be able to see around. And he comes with the light of his truth, the light of his love. This Advent, as we finish out these last few days, may you open yourself to that light and that truth of Jesus Christ. If we do so, yielding to God's plan in our lives, then I believe we truly will have much to celebrate in a few days when we welcome Jesus, the light of the world, into our lives. God's plans are always so much better than our plans. Even if we don't fully understand them at first, being able to look back at them, we can encounter the Lord in a beautiful, profound way. And it causes our hearts to rejoice. My encouragement to you over these last few days is continue to keep up with the gospel readings of Mass. They too begin to unfold the plan that God has for salvation and how we too can participate in that salvation. May you have a very blessed, holy, fruitful Advent and a Christmas filled with much rejoicing at the light of Christ.